Friday morning started off with a trip into Columbus to Jegs to pick up some ignition parts. Now you may remember a couple of videos back, I was working on that orange 70 Nova, trying to work out some drivability issues. I had started working on the carburetor and hooked up the vacuum advance on the distributor down at Marks, and I had definitely made some improvements, but we've still got some drivability issues that I'm not happy with. I decided I wanted to go ahead and replace the HEI with an MSD billet distributor and lock the timing out. So while I'm in at Jegs picking up parts, Tanner's back at the shop moving the cars around and pulling the distributor up out of the note. I was on my way back from Jegs when I found out there's a problem at home with Vicky's Suburban. It seems like every time it rains, it won't start. So this morning to go get lunch for everybody, she had to use her pickup. Houston, we have a problem. What'd you do, bucko? Well, obviously it's not working yet. So now Bucko's involved and he's headed to Mark's to get parts. Wait, what do you mean what year it is? Well, I couldn't remember. Which, I what, called I, you an hour ago. Well, you shouldn't tell me the year. By this time, I'd finally made it back to the shop to get busy. So what we're gonna do here is we're pulling the original HEI distributor out of that 572 and we're gonna replace it with an MSD billet distributor that uses an ignition box. The 572 uses uh, hydraulic roller cam and if you notice this gear is a cast iron gear it's like I don't know if that's a melanized gear but it's definitely a cast iron gear instead of a, a billet steel gear so we're gonna swap the original distributor drive gear from the original HEI and put it on this MSD distributor before we put it in the car. It's important to pay attention to these distributor gears because certain camshafts need to have a bronze gear, others need a melanized, and some others need a billet steel gear. I figure since both distributors use the same gear, the best way to avoid a problem is to use the original. And while I've got it apart, I'm going to go ahead and lock the ignition timing out. So I go ahead and remove the timing bushing and then turn the shaft 180 degrees and put the distributor back together. Now I did miss one crucial detail. This is a slip collar distributor because the 572 in the Nova is a tall deck block. But unfortunately the slip collar was missing and I didn't realize it until it was time to put it in the car. So anyway, I turned my attention to the carburetor. Initially when I took this carburetor apart a week ago, it had a 2.5 power valve in it, which I replaced with a 6.5 and now I'm putting an 8.5 back in its place. I also felt like it had a problem with the accelerator pump circuit, and obviously somebody else did too. The problem is that the accelerator pump actuation arm is bent. I considered bending it back and reusing it, but ultimately I decided to replace it with an older arm that I had in my box that won't bend. At this point, I headed back to Jegs to get a slip collar for the distributor while Robbie and Tanner worked on installing the ignition box. While Buckwheat's back at the house working on Vicky's Suburban and the guys are busy putting the ignition system in the Nova, Zach Kopus from Tidy Rides and Todd Isaac from Jack's Wax have begun the process of taking apart my Monte Carlo to detail it. Some of the factory emblems are put on with two-sided tape and have to be cut off with string, while other emblems use speed nuts on the back side of the sheet metal. All of these emblems will be replaced with new old stock parts, as well as this one piece of wheel well trim that was damaged many years ago. Todd and Zach carefully unwrap the new old stock items and make sure everything's going to fit. Meanwhile, back at my shop, Tanner and Rob have the ignition system installed in the 572, but Tanner called to let me know there's yet another problem. This piece of fuel line definitely needs to be replaced, as it's most certainly a potential fire hazard. So once again, the Nova's at a standstill until I can pick up some more parts for the fuel line tomorrow at Jigs. So that brings us to Friday night and me and Billy are just hanging out in the back shop working on the Falcon with Mr. Wyatt. So what all have you got left to do on this? Really just tidy everything up. Got a little oil leak on this valve cover. Um, got to put the catch can back over there, make some lines to go to it. Mm -hmm. um, and that's pretty much it. I got to extend this exhaust over here on the driver's side just a little but um, I really just go over everything, make sure it's good to go. Do another oil change, top the water off if it needs it. I'd like to mount the alternator on it at some point. Yeah. That way, if we get into a situation, you yeah. know, we can go out and drive it. But other than that, it's pretty much good to go. It's pretty much ready to go test, isn't it? Yeah. We had an injector that wasn't firing when we first put it together because we had the fuel system all apart and the lines apart and everything for a few months and we put it all back together without flushing the lines and we put some in the injector, it wouldn't open. So we uh, got them cleaned out and it sounds really good now. 
It sounds really good. I'm excited to see what it does now. Yeah. You want to start up so you can hear it? Yeah. Sounds a lot better than the last engine. Yeah, that, that engine has uh, a little bit more pop to it and it grabs really nice. You can definitely tell it's a bigger cubic inch. Mm -hmm. And you can definitely tell it's got some massive heads. Uh, it's going to be interesting. It just feels like it's got big lungs, you know? So, you think the chassis will handle the power that this engine will make over the last one? I think so. I mean, it was going pretty straight near the end of last year. I mean, like when it was at the pad, it just needed one horsepower. That's all it needed. That's true. Like That's it true. Just going dead straight on the string. It was just eating it up, wasn't it? And I think for most of the stuff we're doing with this car, it'll be fine. We just need a little bit more mile an hour upstairs. Like if we're putting it on a radial track, mm -hmm. it may not be enough chassis, but. Right, right. You know, running it. Or most we most places we run it'll be fine. So that brings us to Saturday morning, and typically we're busy either racing or working on race cars, but not today. Today is a Vicky day. She's upstairs curling her hair, getting ready to go do something she's wanted to do and has been talking about for several months. So what's on the agenda for today, Squirrely Locks? Well, Titanic, the exhibition thing is in Columbus. And I have waited and waited and I want to go see it. Oh yeah? Yep. And we need to go to Jags. Right, so perfect opportunity. So Vicki and I hop in the dually and we start making our way towards downtown Columbus. Titanic exhibit is at COSI, Center of Science and Industry. Now from what I can tell, COSI is like a really expensive adult daycare center. It's located on Broad Street on the far west side of downtown Columbus, right across the river. Now I can remember my parents taking me and my brothers there when we were little, but that was actually in a totally different facility that was still located in downtown Columbus at the time. So technically, even though I've been to COSI 40 years ago, I have never actually been to COSI in its new location, which also means that I had no idea what the parking situation was and how our choice of vehicles that we're driving today would affect where we can park and how far we're going to have to walk to get there. Now, obviously, I wasn't the only one having second thoughts about parking down here. And by that, I mean the woman in that van and my wife. Shortly thereafter, we got escorted from the parking garage and we were told to park across the street. We gotta park where the big trucks go. We got escorted out, not because we're too tall. Which I was frightened of. We got kicked out because we're too long. That's what she said. When I got across the street, I found out we were gonna probably have to pay to park in this other lot. For the love of God. You didn't pull up close enough, you gotta get out. Taking a ticket. You gotta take the ticket. No, I ain't doing take it. the ticket. No, I'm not doing then it. we're gonna get in trouble. I'm not Pull the ticket out. I'm not taking get the it. ticket. Oh my god. Uh. I had no choice but to take that damn ticket or else the arm wouldn't go up to let us in the parking lot. Gotta follow the rules. We parked across the street at the detriment to Vicky's hairdo. All that extra fluff's gonna be gone by the time we get in the building. I've been watching these posts on Facebook that this was coming for like months and today is opening day and we're here. You're not in some other state racing, we're here. Other than the wind messing up her hair, everything was going good until we got to the front doors and she found out they sold out of tickets for the Titanic exhibit today. So she pulled out a trick out of Jimmy Dale's Waffle House attendance book and bribed the people at the front counter. Are you kidding me? Yes. The only problem is our tickets that we bought won't allow us to get in until 4 o'clock, and that only leaves us an hour to check out the exhibit. Official. So that means we've got an hour and a half to check out everything else. What kind of operation is this, anyway? I don't know, but... Oh. Do you remember what I said about this place being an adult daycare center? I'll let you be the judge. 
It boggles my mind that something that big was roaming around the earth at some point in time. It's weird. There's something that big roaming around right now. Vicki typically doesn't enjoy my that's what she said jokes or any of my other quote inappropriate behavior end quote. But regardless of what she thinks of my sense of humor, sexual innuendos are natural. That's the moth man. No, that's a lightning bug. It's not the moth man. It's the moth man. It was at this point that Vicky learned something completely new about lightning bugs. No, that's what was going on in the yard when the lightning bugs were flashing. All the times when I was catching lightning bugs when I was a kid and I'd put them in a mason jar, I just ruined some poor bug's night. You've ruined had a lot no of nights, idea. actually. <laughs> no idea that's what he was trying to do. Half the time, I don't think she knows what I'm trying to do either. Anyway, we're just trying to burn up some time, waiting our turn to go through the Titanic exhibit upstairs. Meanwhile, the exhibits downstairs are getting weirder and weirder and weirder and weirder. I guess this exhibit was supposed to teach kids that they could spray water at each other, but I chose to teach kids to do something else. God, I can't take you anywhere. It was at that point Vicky decided we'd better get in line for the exhibit before I end up getting thrown out. Boarding pass. When you pay to get in the exhibit, they give you a boarding pass with the name of somebody who actually was on the ship. And when you walk into the exhibit, the first thing you see is a submersible similar to the ones that they used to collect all these artifacts off the seafloor of the Atlantic Ocean. Each item is pictured just as they were found before being brought to the surface. There were hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of artifacts, as well as a couple very, very highly detailed scale models of the ship. This one shows the condition of the ship as it was found, and of course this one depicts what the ship looked like before it hit the iceberg on April 15th, 1912. Many of the artifacts are protected by glass cases, while others are out in the open where you can see them and touch them. Other parts of the exhibit show actual video of the ship being built, and I quickly realized how realistic the movie Titanic actually was, especially once we started to walk down these corridors. While the entire exhibit was really neat, my favorite part, by far, was the Grand Staircase, which eerily looked exactly as it did in the movie. After Vicky and I got our picture taken on the grand staircase, we had just a little bit of time left to check out the rest of the exhibit. They showed the differences between first class and third class, and they even had a scale model of the watertight doors that were closed after the Titanic hit the iceberg on that fateful night in April at 2.20 in the morning. You know what I think? What? I think tonight I'm gonna draw you like a French girl. What do you think of that? <laughs> so that brings us to Monday morning and we've got a very busy day ahead of us today. Billy has found a buyer for the dyno, and they're supposed to show up this afternoon to pick it up. In the meantime, he's working on the Falcon out back while up in the front shop, me and Tanner are getting back on the Orange Nova, trying to get it finished up. So we just about ready to check for leaks? Yeah, I think that's about time. I'll let you crank it over and I'll watch it and see if anything leaks. This Nova has a mechanical fuel pump, so Tanner cranked it over until the bowl's filled with gasoline and I could check for leaks. Once we made sure the carburetor and the fuel lines were leak free, it was time to hook the coil wire up, prime the accelerator pumps, and get ready to fire it up. Okay, hit it. The big block fired right up, and I picked up the timing light and adjusted the ignition timing to 38 degrees before top dead center. Sounds pretty good. You ready to take it for a ride? Yeah. It's much more responsive with that timing locked out. Yeah. Now that I've been through the carburetor and the ignition timing's locked out at 38 degrees, it's time to see what this Nova is capable of.
The first time I went through the gears in the Nova, it was evident that the 572 is quite happy with the timing locked out and the changes that I've made to the carburetor. Now that I know it runs good at wide open, it's time to find out just exactly what its tendencies are, having to idle around town, and how well the engine runs at part throttle. I'm trying to put the car through all different scenarios to see if there's a lean spot in the carburetor, if the power valve is set just right, if the ignition timing needs to be advanced or retarded before I call it good enough and tell my buddy he can come get his car. And since the 572 is pretty thirsty, we head straight to the local sheet station to top it off with 93 octane pump gas. After I topped it off with fuel, I told Tanner he could take the wheel and give me an unbiased opinion on the tune-up I've put in this car. No pumps needed. <laughs> Getting a car like this to run good at wide open throttle is pretty easy, but part throttle, not so much. It's really hard to capture on camera what something feels like that's right. You wouldn't understand unless you were in the car and riding in it or driving it. We took the Nova back to the shop, and we arrived just as a rental company was dropping off a forklift that Billy's going to use to pick up the dyno when the new owner comes to pick it up later this afternoon. I couldn't wait to go in and tell Billy this Nova's ready for him to drive. It's ready for you to test drive. You done wore the clutch out for me. While Billy's pretty good at tuning fuel injection, I'm pretty good at tuning carburetors. You guys got the clutch all hot. Let's see if we can burn it up. <laughs> I told your dad, I said, this is my vote for driving on sick week. I think that's what Josh is going to do with it next year. Yeah, this thing, we were cruising around at like 1,800 RPMs at 65 miles an hour in fifth gear. I mean, it's going to be perfect. for your dad's stuff well it makes a lot more power down low that's for sure it pretty much just blows them off in first and then second it starts to straighten up near the end of second i mean it ain't no fuel injected car now yeah <laughs> is the throttle response good yeah it's pretty good it's yeah. got a slight stumble in third what yeah you're probably just shifting it too low no i mean just like you bring it up in third. Like, if you're in third, if you just do it real fast. It, oh, oh yeah. okay. I see. But, I mean, no, you're never going to do that unless you just try to do it. But. Oh, you, you really tested it good. Yeah. You want to see if I had any holes in my program. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'll get on that dead spot in third from 500 RPM, okay? <laughs> mm -hmm. 